Right, I'm going to show you how to set up the, the virtual machine. So the first thing we want to do is have Oracle's virtual box installed, which I've got here. Now you can see the virtual machine that I've got on here is the PWIS, but I'm just going to bring in another one as a test. So what we're going to do is I go File, Import Appliance, and this is that uh, OBA file that you would have downloaded uh, via the link uh, on the Planet 9 forum. I'm just going to click that, and this is just on my external hard drive. So I'm just going to go to PWS, and that's it there. So I'm going to click on that, click Next, and then Import, which I've done, and that'll take a few minutes to do. Once that has imported, uh, after a few minutes, you'll end up with this here. Now I've got a PWIS 1. It's because I've already got one and it's, uh, they can't import another one of exactly the same name. So it's actually called it PWIS 1. Uh, what I'm actually going to do to show you how this actually all works, uh, save me deleting one that already works, I'm going to just go to settings for the new one that I've imported. And I'm just going to change the name to PWIS test. Like so. You can see that's now called PWIS test. And when we start this, there's a couple of things that we want to do. Uh, the first thing is normally I would have the, the interface connected. We won't do that for the moment. I can actually set it up quite happily and it'll go into simulation mode without having the interface connected. But what I want to do is start this. And when I start it, I don't want to just click start over here. I can actually do that, but probably a better way to do it is via a batch file. And there's a genius by the name of Klaus on Planet 9 who came up with this batch file which actually drives the date back to 2019 each time you open it. And what that does is it stops this timeout of the, the device which then creates like blackens out all the menus etc. So that's what this one is here. Now all a batch file is, and I was pretty ignorant when I first uh, heard of it, it's basically just a bunch of commands that tell the computer to start certain things. So if I open it, I'm not actually going to click and open it, I'm just going to click edit so we can actually see what's in it. And it's in notepad, but there's just a bunch of commands here which says to do a whole bunch of stuff with a virtual box and starting the actual uh, program and setting the date back to a certain time uh, back in 2019. It's the, ninth, the first of the 9th, 2019. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make another one and I'm going to call this PWE test and I'm going to save that as, save as. So when you actually create one of these, when you first try and create it, it'll try and save it as a text document. I don't want to do that. I want to change it and turn it into a bat file. So you can see that's currently a bat file. So you would actually just go PWIS. I've just called it PWIS start, but it doesn't matter what you call it, but I'm actually just going to call this PWIS test start and then dot bat and I'm going to save that to my de desktop so it sits on the desktop and then I'm going to go from there. So I'm going to click save, that's PWIS test at start, I can close that and that's there now. And what I want to do is start PWIS from that batch file. So I open VirtualBox Manager or VirtualBox. Don't start from here, just go to this one here, and this is going to start the new one that I've just imported, so I'll click on that. Now, it may give you some virus protection saying, hey, something's trying to access to your computer. If you're happy with that, I'm going to go allow that. And once we've started, and we've got to this stage here, there's a file called shortcut to p, I think it's p-r-a-g-u-n-g.xml. I'm going to right click on that and open it in Notepad. And what I want to do, a few lines down, there's one called validation string. Okay, and validation string, it's got an X in the middle. I want you to delete the X and put four nines in there. Okay, so you've got validation string 9999 and then validation string afterwards. And then I'm going to click File and Save. And then I'm going to close that down. And that basically makes the thing valid for 9,999 days. 
Yeah. I've got my PWIST down here. There's a whole bunch of other stuff here that you can look through if you want, but the PWIST program is the one with the uh, little car and PWIST 2 on it. Now, if I want to go into simulation mode, if I don't have an interface yet, I can click into this and it'll actually just go into it. It'll say, hey, I haven't detected a, an interface. Do you want to go into simulation mode? And you click yes, and then you can go into it. And for mine, a Boxster, it actually comes up with a 991. Uh, and which has a lot of similar stuff in it that you can actually go and have a bit of a play with and see what's actually in the thing. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to exit out of it now. Power off. And now we are going to get the interface going. So the interface itself looks like this thing here. There are two leads, one that goes to the USB for your computer, the other one which is the, the port on the car. This must be connected with the car having power on it. So connect a, a battery charger to the car because it's going to draw about 15 amps or so, or maybe a little bit less than 15 amps. So I've got a 15 amp charger which seems to hack the face quite happily. So I'm going to put that on. So I've Put the charger on, I have put the car, turned the car on, and now I'm going to collect the, the OBD port. And you'll notice when I do that, you'll have a flashing power on there. That's exactly what you want to see. And now we'll come back here and see what we've got. So before I start, the first thing I want to do is make sure that the virtual mean machine knows that it needs to load this as it's uh, as it uh, brings it up. So I'm just going to get rid of my virtual, so the external hard drive, and now I'm going to connect. So you must connect the, the interface with VirtualBox started like this, but not the virtual machine going. So I'm just going to connect that there now. And I'm going to go into settings, USB, and you can see the US device filters, what that is, that's saying, hey, I want you to load these when we start this virtual machine. So there's nothing in there at the moment, so I need to click the little USB plus over here, and that lists the device. I'm going to click on that, and now that puts it in there. And that means it says, hey, I want you to load that when we start the machine. I'm going to click OK, and now I'm going to click Start using that batch file. And to check that the virtual machine has actually said, hey, I want to load this, you can come down to the USB icon down the bottom here. And if you just hover over that, we should see that Samtech HSX interface there. So that's good. Now, it should come up with this found new hardware, and then it's going to search for it, and it's actually going to load it. It's going to come up with the install wizard. Then you're going to click Next, and then it's going to go through its routine to go and find the software and load the the drivers for it. Once it's done that, you click finish, which is great. The next thing we want to do, just to check that it is actually seeing it, so the computer, the virtual machine is actually seeing it correctly before we start PWIS, so I'm going to click start, control panel, system, hardware, device manager. And under Device Manager, I should see Lib USB Win32 Devices. Okay, if I click on the plus, I'll see HSX Interface. If that is there, that is what you want to see. If you don't have that, then something has gone wrong and you need to backtrack because it's not going to identify it when you open PWIS. Okay, so let's jump out of that. Now what I'm going to do is start the PWIS program. You can see the date has been set to the 31st of August 2019. And now, when I start it, what I should see is I should just go to Diagnostics, and for me, my car is a 981. I click on 981, and it's going to boot up the Diagnostics program. And what I should see with the interface is as it's running up, the 
flashing power light should stay on, but I should see a solid USB pop up. And as soon as that solid USB pops up, there it is there, I know that it's corrected, it's connected correctly. And now that it is all connected to the car and your interface drivers are all uh, loaded and you are good to go. Uh, 